Welcome back to another Godot recipe. This time we're going to talk about how to select multiple units on the screen in the style of an RTS or real-time strategy game. All right, let's get started. So let's assume we've got our RTS unit here that's set up so that if it's selected, when you click, it will move to the place you click. Now, click to move is pretty easy to implement, and I've talked about that in another recipe, so I'm not going to say anything about that here. We're not going to worry about how this unit works. Let's just assume you already have a unit that can move to a target if it's given a target. And what we want to talk about is how we deal with multiple units like this. Okay, so I've created a world scene and I've instanced four units in here. And the way we want this input to work is I want to be able to draw a rectangle around some number of units and whichever ones I have in this box when I release are going to be the ones that I select. And then when I click, the selected units will move. So let's begin with a script attached to the world node. And a few variables we're going to need. We're going to need a variable that keeps track of whether we are currently dragging the mouse to create that box or not. Uh, we're going to have a list or a an array to contain all of the selected units, whichever units I've selected when I release the mouse. And then we're going to have a vector to keep track of where we started dragging, the drag start. And finally, we need a rectangle because when we let go of the mouse and we're ready to select the units, we need to detect which units are inside of that rectangle. And so that means we're going to need a rectangle shape 2D, which is a collision shape, which knows how to detect kinematic bodies, which is what my units are. So we'll begin with the drawing of the box. So I'm going to use the unhandled input callback here, which means that this will be detecting mouse clicks that haven't already been consumed by the UI. Whatever UI you might have in your game is going to consume those inputs first. And so what we want to look for is if the event is input mouse button and the events button index is equal to uh, button left. So if, if I click the left mouse button and if that happened, then either I, this event is a mouse click or a mouse release, right? It's either a down or an up event. So if the event was the pressed event, then we want to start dragging, but only if we don't already have some selected units. So I'm going to say if selected dot size is equal to zero, then we will start dragging. So I'm going to set dragging equal to true, and I'm going to set the drag start to the event dot position. Now if the event wasn't pressed, and I'm dragging, so I let go of the mouse when I was dragging, then I'm going to set dragging uh, to false. So that's all we need to do for our click and drag to, to highlight a rectangle. But it won't do us much good if we can't actually see the rectangle that we're drawing. So what we're also going to do is we're going to say if we get an input mouse motion and we're dragging, then we're going to call update, which is going to call our uh, draw method. And in the draw method is we're going to draw a rectangle. But we're also going to put an if dragging in here because two reasons. One, we might want to draw some other things. And second is that when the node enters the tree, draw gets called. So if I just draw a rectangle in here, we'll start the game out with a rectangle already drawn on the screen based on wherever the mouse started and that's not going to look good. So now we're going to draw a rectangle. So we're going to call draw rect and pass it a rectangle. The rectangle that we're going to use starts at the drag start and it ends at the global mouse position minus the drag start. So the difference this is going to be the size of the rectangle. And then We'll do this on the next line. The color, we're just going to use a gray. 
And then I'm going to put false here because I don't want the rectangle to be filled. I want it to be just an outline of a rectangle. But let's go ahead and give this a shot and make sure we see what we want to see. Okay. So you see when I let go of the mouse, I'm not, the, the rectangle is staying there. Right, so we also want to update when we let go of the mouse. So we should update here as well. And now I can draw, and when I let go, the box disappears. So now we can find out what units our rectangle collided with. And to do that, we're going to use the Physics 2D Direct Space State. And this is an object that you can query in Godot to get information from the Physics 2D server. And the, specifically, the function that we want is this intersect shape. Intersect shape is going to return an array of objects, or an array of dictionaries identifying the objects that it collided with. All we need to do is give it some shape query parameters, which look like this and have all sorts of info about how we want to perform the collision and really all we need for ours here is we need to set the shape to our rectangle and we need to set the transform to specify the location of the rectangle all right so over here in the code what we're going to do is we're going to record our drag end so we know where where we let go and that'll let us set the size of our collision shape. That's the select rect extents. And that's drag end minus drag start. And because in collision shapes the extents are measured from the center, we need to divide by two. Okay, and then we're ready to do our query. So we'll start by getting the space. We do that by getting the world 2D direct space state. And then our query that we need to make is a physics 2D shape query parameters.new. We call the set shape to put our select rect in there. And then we need to set the transform. By constructing a transform 2D with a rotation of zero and the position will be drag end plus drag start divided by two, which gives us the center of our drag rectangle. So we want to put the shape at the center of the rectangle that we dragged. And then we just do our query. So we'll set our selected variable. Remember it's going to return an array to space dot intersect shape query. And now we have an array of dictionaries. Let's print selected so we can see what that looks like. So I'll run the scene and I'm going to draw the box over it and let go. And now down here in our output you can see what it printed which was a bunch of dictionaries right here we go so first dictionary is that one so it has a collider and then some metadata but the collider is the key we want for each dictionary it identifies the kinematic body that's our unit and the first thing we want to do when we've selected a bunch of shapes is we want to set them all to be to indicate they're they're selected Right, the units have a selected property that, if it's true, will draw a highlight around them. So let's just loop through that selected array and each item collider selected equals true. And let's give that a try here real quick. So now when I draw the box around it, they turn highlighted. Okay, we're almost done. Now we just need to be able to give them all a command to move. So up here, when we clicked the mouse button down, we checked if we didn't have anything selected, we would drag. 
So all our, turn, our alternative here is if we do have something selected. And if we do, we're going to give them each an order to move. So we'll loop through again that selected array and set item.collider.target equal to our event position, the place we clicked. And then we also need to remember to set our selected property to false so they won't be highlighted anymore. And then since we since we clicked and gave them all an order, let's clear our selected array so we don't have them selected anymore. And depending on how you're doing your game, you want to might want to keep those units selected. Uh, so you can change this. You could use a different, maybe right click makes them move. You can change this around. But I'm just trying to keep it simple for this demonstration. So there we go. If I select them and then click, they're all going to move to the spot I specified. Let's just grab a couple of them, right? So you can select as many as you need, and they will go where you tell them to go. So hopefully this helps you if you're making something like an RTS and you need to know how to select multiple units. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in a future video. This tutorial is part of my new Godot Recipes website. The goal is to collect all the best tips and lessons to help make you a better Godot developer. If you like this video, I hope you'll go and check out the site. And make sure to hit subscribe so you'll be notified whenever I release new videos. Thanks for watching.